Hey guys, this is Trevor Cycle One McDougal, and I just sat down with the band Wicked. Don't know them? You should. They got a new album coming out on March 11th, and they have a hot new video. I will post the link right here. But much in the way of true CGCM fashion, we had a computer screw up. Don't know why. I, I, I blame the other guys. The recording didn't start till like five minutes in the interview. So you, you completely missed the beginning, but we didn't miss much. The, the band just kind of introduced themselves. So it's going to cut right into with them talking. So I hope you can follow along. They let us in on a few secrets. They tell a few good stories. And you know what? They give us a insight to what goes on behind the scenes, what's upcoming for the band. And they reveal a big thing here, the name of their next album. So they have a new one coming out March 11th. Check it out and uh, just enjoy because these guys are great and support the band. Head out to their website. Uh, I'll post a link to that too within the video and in the description and support the band because these days we need music. The world is a tough place. We need music to lift us up. Hope you guys enjoy this wicked interview. We live together. Um, like we've been we've been living together for you know maybe seven eight years now. So uh, so yeah, it, it's it's kind of a different thing. It's it's. You know, and, and that kind of goes into some of the sarcasm of our album title a little bit, but um, we are proud that we're able to live, act, and, um, you know, kind of publicly be a, a real band. Yeah. Um, well, two of you are actually brothers, are you not? That's yep. right. Could you tell? <laughs> and and you, can, you can stand still literally with each other. <laughs> it ends the house, uh, you know? Like, sometimes. 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 <laughs> That's why we keep uh, we keep the spackle around pretty close, so if we have to fix any walls, <laughs> walls and yeah. stuff like so that. So it's it's not guitars going through the walls; it's heads and fists. It's like it's like right out of it. It's like any other band. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, you guys are, you call yourselves wicked, but. Uh, Things must get kind of wicked at times. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's it hard. I mean. I love asking bands I talk to for road stories or, or something, a story. So would you be willing to oblige? Cause I think that's one of the big things that uh, fans like to hear. I don't like to ask the normal questions, you know, where'd you get your name, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, we, that's nice and refreshing. <laughs> you know, I like to hear something the fans don't know. Can you tell a story? Embarrassing, yeah. whatever. You can each tell a story if you want. I don't care. Oh, that, that's a good one. Yeah, go ahead, Scotty. Well, last, um, this past summer, we all uh, crammed into a van and we just drove all the way across the country to, to uh, California to, to do some filming and things for upcoming um, releases. And that was quite an experience. Yeah, <laughs> not about driving. Yeah, talk about, so it's, it's, you know, it's a little different. You know, we weren't on the road for shows, but we had our gear with us and we, we had a job to do, right? And uh, think about sitting, driving straight all the way to California from New York. No talk hotels, about no breaks. 38 hours, oh. switching on and off in the van, sleeping, you know, living close quarters with each other, waking up in middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, <laughs> um, you know, with some pretty uh, raunchy bathrooms and stuff like that. <laughs> but it was it was a riot. I mean, um, the, the, the cool part of this story is... They're like to, to what you're alluding to, there's always something when you got a story. And the thing with this trip was ants. And it was the <laughs> craziest fucking thing. It was like everywhere we went, we were having these problems with ants, ironically. Okay, who's if the flaw? In, in, an in a 12 passenger <laughs> van. And who would have thought ants would have been our demise <laughs> on this trip? So to I got to ask them, who, who's the slob? Who got blamed? <laughs> well, we'll wait, 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 on the driver gunner because he backed into a bush and we have a feeling that's where it happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a bush. I pull up and I open up the back doors and there's a shit ton of ants. They were climbing all and over the ceiling, all under the chassis, the, the chassis of the van. It was crazy. So, so needless to say, what do you do? We're like, well, shit. Here we are. We're now in like uh, Huntington Beach. Um, just slept on the beach because we didn't want to pay for a hotel room. Thought we'd get some rays, and we're like, we got to get rid of these ants. 
So logically, what's the easiest solution that, you know, has the least effort for us? We go to a car wash. Hit them with water. <laughs> Hit them with water, right? So we go to a car wash. The car wash doesn't work. We're stuck in the car wash <laughs> with, the <laughs> with the ants. So from there, we finally get the van out of this car wash that's not functioning. Um, and we're going for a round two car wash try. Um, we show up and Google Maps brings us to the next closest car wash. Well, it's not a car wash. Corporate it's the corporate headquarters <laughs> for a car wash. <laughs> so here we are, ants all over. Um, and we finally do find a car wash, our uh, third try. Um, we didn't strike out. So now and one of you has we, thought about buying a bug bomb and just putting it off in the vehicle for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> that would ruin all the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to oh. get Ozzy Osbourne to come and snip them all up. But <laughs> instead, instead we, uh, we, we went through a car wash, and then they all started coming in even more. They came inside. Inside, man. and they're swarming now, and they're, and they're all over everything, crawling on us. Um, so we had to take all of our luggage out and we had to use the vacuums at a car wash and, and all these people in California are looking at the New York license plate and like, oh, what the geez. fuck are these guys <laughs> doing? It's all crazy. of our belongings just on the sidewalk. <laughs> Man, oh my out. God. That's, that's what it's, that's what they call paying your dues, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the next yeah. time you're playing a live show and an ant crawls out of your guitar or something, you'll know where it came from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's Gunner's fault. Let's get into a little bit. Thank you for the story. That was great. But let's get a little bit into what we're all here for the new album. You know, like I said, it's due March 11th. What can you tell me about it? How many tracks? Uh, the vibe? Ah, there it is. Sneak peek right there. That's right. We got so on this album, we got uh, we got eight tracks. Eight tracks um, <laughs> it's it's actually kind of cool. Um, the whole vibe of this album um, for us is more of a celebration of really what we've been doing for the, for almost, you know, the last decade as, yeah. as the four of us. Right. And, um, and that really is, is the fact that we haven't officially released anything. Um, you got one of the limited copies of, you know, what I would call a little bit more of our demo work. Um, and we, we did a couple of cool things like that over the years. Origins was one. There was only like a couple hundred of those. Yeah. And that was when we were really young. Um, yeah, you got all a, covered uh, up in what, Life, Life Alive, I believe, going back to 2000. Life Alive was a vinyl, yep. And that yep. was that was limited. That that one we actually recorded. Man, you um, know your shit. <laughs> that, that one was with the better drummer, JP. <laughs> Gunner, Gunner was under his tutelage. <laughs> No, but it's cool. This this album is a big celebration and kind of a re-entrance into the market for us. Um, you know, alluding back to you know the last two years of downtime with COVID and and just just a lot of things for us. Um, you know, we it, it, interestingly enough is you know we spent a lot of years becoming a band um, and learning how to play live, and I think that was important. Um, and and now we kind of feel like we're at that point where we're ready to come out with more actual official releases like this that'll be available on everything yep. digital streaming cd vinyl you name it cool, yeah. um lots of music videos um <laughs> and and the reason being is we really have the right team together now um so it's important to us uh to to have all that and to be able to play the same way we do live and represent that on the cd and vice versa and not be one of these bands that has to play tracks, tracks. And, you know yeah. what I mean? So. so here's the information I couldn't find out then. Are you guys self-labeled or like self-releasing or are you on a label now? Because I couldn't find any information on that. Yep. So this is a, a completely independent um, release through ma uh, a record company that's called Magic Right Records. Um, it's not it's not your typical like record deal or anything. They're just doing the manufacturing for us. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, this is a DIY release. And that, that, that kind of ties back into what I was just saying is, um, you know, getting the team together and kind of sorting out the business. That's been a big um, topic for us over the last two years, which, you know, again, taking advantage of COVID was really something that we dived into. Um, you know, we, we had worked with some different people in the past, and we definitely learned a lot over the years. But one of the big things we learned going into COVID in 2020 was that we needed to take control of the band um, and create a, a proper business. Um, and I think as kids, we 
were always just more focused on, you know, being rockers and, and playing live and, and all that good stuff, which is yeah. important. Um, but we had to learn quick uh, everything from, you know, copyright laws and all the legal stuff, you know, mm-hmm. to how to create your own business and, and how to manage that, the accounting and everything like that. And I think that's, that's something that you're not going to probably hear in a lot of interviews and you're not going to hear a lot of bands talk about and some don't even know anything about that. Which well, is it is part. the music business, you know, exactly. music is great. You want to go on stage, have fun, go after stage, get laid, have a drink, whatever. That's fine and dandy too. I mean, but there, there is the part of it, like you just said, that most people want to choose to ignore. Yeah. You know, we, we as fans tend to put our, our rock bands and stars on this high pedestal, but you forget that, you know, you still eat, sleep and shit like the rest of us, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy because, you know, even us back, you know, like I alluded to just back to a couple of years ago, had this somewhat of a blinded premonition of, you know, how it all happens and, and what like your goals are supposed to be. And, and this path is the same for everybody. And, and I think that's important for other musicians to hear is that's not always the case. Yep. Um, so, you know, you got to look at your goals and, and your dreams and how they align with reality sometimes and also with what's right and wrong when it comes to the music business, because it's changing and it's changing fast and daily oh, yeah. and hourly sometimes. Um, you gotta stay on top of it, otherwise it's gonna take you, you know. Oh, it, it could chew you up and spit you out, absolutely. You know, I think a lot of people, a lot of young bands always look at the old quintessential model of, you know, which was very different back in like the 80s and 70s is got to get a record deal. Got to get a record uh, deal. Yeah. That's gotta, not always the case. Got to get on, you know, the ultimate is to get on, you know, Sony or, you know, this or that or, you know, the really, hot new. You come to find out when you're at a, a starting level, it's better to keep everything in house as long as you can. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, and you, you look at some of these deals and they're like, um, you know, they want at least five records, you know, so you're tied in and you're locked in. Um, and if you don't have the proper support financially or, or otherwise, you know, you could get yourself kind of cornered into a, a precarious situation well, where you love our contemporaries fall into that, yeah. that trap, you know, and, it, and it's sad. And it's good that we got to learn from those situations early but, on. Yeah. 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 And, um, and, you know, and then you, you'll kind of look back and you'll say, hey, you know, was it worth it? I can't make decisions for myself as an artist or as a company, you know, to a degree. Um, and that's kind of why we've chosen to, you know, get our, our ducks in a row and, um, and do this independently for the time being, at least, because it's, it's, it's a lot more work, but you have that control and you're able to make the mistakes yourself and learn from them, right? Well, and exactly. Think- and you hear that, like, I'm a big fan of rock docs. I love reading biographies and stuff like that a lot of it. And they always seem to have that same chapter about how they screwed up they signed their life away they got a million selling album back in the 80s you know the strip era if you want to go with that and you know they're living in a a one-room shack because the record company gets all the money yeah it's not the way that it's portrayed in in magazines and on much music or mtv back in the day when they actually used to play music you know (laughs) but with this new album you guys got like a big grammy award producer how'd that come about you end up with uh, was it ignacio uh, molino wasn't it yep. yeah that's right yeah he's from panama um we call him nacho um for sure <laughs> but uh you know it's that's a good story to tell um and i'll take it all the way back to um our, our trips to salem, salem right yeah salem, Mass. salem massachusetts yeah we uh we would go to salem massachusetts and visit a friend uh david newman um and just, they have a magic shop there. Um, but really, even before that, it, it was just, you know, us doing sometimes what we do as a group of friends when we're not playing music and it's just traveling and seeing things. Um, and we went on Halloween one year and it's like Mardi Gras for like, you know, Halloween lovers in Salem. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but we became like fast friends with, you know, David and Maria, their shop. So we would kind of like consistently go to Salem every now and then and visit. Um it's cool because like when we walk in town, uh, you know, like everybody knows it's like, oh, there's the Wicked, Wicked Boys, Boys in town. I mean? yeah. <laughs> so um, long story short, we find out that, you know, David and Maria, Maria's son is Nacho and, and he's living in Panama. Um, so over a couple of years, you know, Maria was looking to get her son to the U.S. with them. 
and and that all kind of worked out and we found out oh he's he's a producer and he's done these big things with um you know a lot of uh you know salsa bands reggaeton Ruben Blades, he's done a lot yeah, of his work. Yeah, so big band stuff. So real technical, you know, you're talking over like 20 plus players, horn sections. Um, but the guy's a Pantera fan. And he loves hard rock, right? And metal. Um, so he's been kind of looking to, you know, work with more bands like that as well. And uh, it was just a perfect friendship, you know, just on a friendship level, but also on a musical level where this ironic, weird thing where we came together out of nowhere um, and got to know each other. Well, you know, we go to 2020, we're building a studio in our house, you know, where the four of us live and, um, and, you know, Nacho comes up, he helps us with the acoustics. He helps us with all of like the gear for recording. Um, and, and this whole thing really comes together Nacho moves up near us in upstate New York now. So, so he goes from Panama to Brooklyn now up here and he's taking this risk, you know, because we become friends and, you know, we believe in each other. And, uh, you know, that now we we're here today where we're able to efficiently work as four guys in a band and an engineer producer that like we could go downstairs right now if we've got a song idea and work it through and yeah. we could demo it out, you know, and then if we want to get better tones and stuff like that, we could go to a bigger studio, but we're not, again, it's, it's, it's all about that business mind too. Right. Like we put, we put the capital um, out there. We were entrepreneurs in terms of taking that risk and building the studio and putting the money into it. But in the long run, we're really saving time, efficiency and money because we're able to, whenever we have an idea, put it down and not forget it. So we're yeah. writing like great, like, crazy guys over here oh, yeah. i mean it's like another demo so it's, so it's not going to be another two years for another album then absolutely not i mean or, we got we got another we got another full-length album already done on deck ready to go with four or five music videos um those were the ones wow. we did in california and that's ready to go whenever we feel you know the time is and, and honestly we're thinking this year because you know like i said we just re-entered the market with the last american rock band People are excited to see, you know, actual music available on different platforms now, different from what we've done before. But, you know, it's good timing, too, because everybody's kind of starting to break back out there in the music scene now after COVID. It seems. Yeah. Um, oh, and, the know, dam is broken. Here. Yeah. But, you know, but we're ready to go. And I think people are ready to go. Yeah, just as much as we're hungry to play, people are ready yeah. to come out and, you know, see a, a live show or listen to new music. So it's perfect time for us. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, look, I really hope you guys come up towards Canada. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we like I said before, we were always up there for hockey back in a, a previous life. Yeah. Um, but I love Canada and I and I cannot wait to bring the music there and, and you know, see the fans there and meet people. Um, well, CGCM really is of officially, I mean, we're global. We, we are played all over and we have representatives all over. It's officially based in Toronto. I myself personally. My offices are two hours north of Toronto, so I'm, I'm oh, nice. in cottage country, way yeah. <laughs> you know, where the moose live. You know, that's me. <laughs> but yeah, you guys actually have some shows too. coming up, and I have to read them here because I'm old and my memory isn't that good. So let me see if I can help give you a little promo here. So on March 11th, not only do you have the album release, but you have uh, a party going on at Photo City Music Hall in Rochester. That's right. Yeah. April 1st, you got uh, a show at the Lux Lounge in Rochester. Super cool, divey kind of place. Um, if you ever do come to Rochester, those are our two, you know, there's awesome venues here, but those are our two favorites where we actually hang. It's full of everybody from punk rockers to classic rockers to corporate people, but um, but it's got a cool, you know, rock and roll vibe and, and we respect that. Like you know, we're appreciative that those are available to us in our area. Well, so. we, we hope to see you in Toronto at a place called the Rock Pile. This is what you kind of oh, think. Yeah, kind of vibe, the Rock Pile. Kind of like, a, they call it a dive bar, but it's a club. It's a cool. lot of fun. It's great. And as a band, you're literally inches away from the audience. It's fantastic. That's great. That's the best. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's what you want. Uh, you know, and the girls are there too. So there's no problem with that. <laughs> you, need, you need those. But That's I see right. <laughs> in, in April, you got two dates in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, absolutely. HMAX is a very cool place if you're down, you know, in the Harrisburg area. Um, again, we, we've got a big time number one fan um, and his son owns that club. His name's Craig. Um, but he's 
he's uh he's the model of what rock and roll fans are you know somebody who's always there supporting not only us but other rock bands um commenting sharing you know getting the music you know you know, yeah like back in the old days not like today where the kids are you know what's the hot take for 30 seconds flipping through your playlist on spotify you know real a real fan and uh yeah. we appreciate there's a lot of people that are still out there that are like that and we love them for it yeah that's uh our, one of our main mission statements here at cgcm but yeah. uh you, you you just talked on something that i was curious about digital medium these days it's a real double-edged sword for for bands, especially. I mean, we we are a digital medium ourselves. You know, we're an online radio station, and we started off as just a little podcast, but we want to make sure the artists get paid. So we went to a legit station where if we play your music, you earn your pennies. I guess. Well, basically, that's what it is these days. <laughs> exactly. <It's pennies. laughs> you know, but they add up if you get enough plays. A lot of bands, especially newer bands like yourselves, you, you have to go digital. Yeah. And a lot of bands like yourselves are self-producing because the idea of the record companies is dead and gone now. Yeah. Sony, Geffen, all of them, they're still around, but it's not like it was in the 80s. Yeah. So That's with that being the way that it is, and you know, during COVID, digital streaming went way up, like billions of dollars up. Um, I'm actually doing a, a, a thesis on this for, I'm also a college student, so I'm working on a story for this right oh, now for college. Cool. <laughs> I'm an old college student, but I'm there. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> That's man. Cool. Man. But, you know, we're talking about music and society, and it, it's it's really boomed because this is how we're consuming. We can't go to the store and buy it. Stores yeah. are closed, right? Yeah. So how do you find that? Like, you obviously want to find your, you know, you got a house, you got to pay for it. You got a studio, you got to pay for it. You have a new album that you want to, that you have in the bank ready to go. All that takes money. That's right. And without touring as much as it has been, how do you, what's your feelings in all this? Like, do you agree with the digital sense or do you wish it was gone or? I mean, we, you know, we, we go back to the way we really started it with those limited releases. We, we do at our heart's core wish it was gone. Um, you know, I think it, there's something to people buying a physical album, right? Yep. And, and not only making, making the money for the band, but, you know, the fans get something more. Um, yep. It's a lost concept and it's, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, you know, and you'll even see it. People, people get kind of lost in like the times and, you know, we sometimes get the feeling like people are like they have bought into this new model and they're like, well, why should I even pay for right. what what your music or stuff is? And it's like, don't you realize that like what we're doing takes time and money and it's a business just like anything else? You know what I mean? Just because it has an art aspect to it doesn't make it unvaluable. Yep. Um, so that that's a bit of a tough pill. And that's kind of where we stand on that. But to your point is you really kind of have to play the game, right? And uh, especially as a new artist, um, you're, you're gonna have to find ways to still use those digital streaming services more for the growth aspect um, and, and hope to use it the right way where you, you know you're not gonna financially have, you know, gains off of that the way you would in other senses to a degree, depending on how many, you know, people listen to it. But, you're going to use that more to hopefully we can reach someone in Japan, reach people, you know, yeah, Australia, yeah. people that we wouldn't be able to reach with just releasing it physically DIY. Yeah. So we, you know, there's an advantage to that digital aspect for a band starting out like us, you know, in the times that we are in now. Um, whereas if we we're just releasing like a physical, you know, live album, like the life live, you mentioned, you know, how many people are actually going to find out about that unless you're using social media, digital releases and stuff like that, you know? But our, our, I mean, our hope, we, we always kind of sit back and we, we laugh because things are cyclical, right? And business and music and style. And, you know, you could go to like uh, Forever 21, maybe a year or two ago, and I saw the bell bottoms coming back out. And, oh, yeah. you know, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's funny. Things, things do come around. And, you know, with that said, you know, we, we do also have CDs for sale. We're, we have vinyls that are being manufactured and, and will be for sale. Um, and yeah, I used to, I used to love well. when you pick up a CD or I'm going to date myself here, even a cassette, you yeah. know, I would, I would pull out the booklet and, and unfold it to, if it was a cassette exactly, yeah. booklet and read every detail. Sometimes I would buy an album just on the producer's name alone. You yeah, know, yeah. 
I wanted to look at little pictures, who you guys were thanking in the booklets, you know, as the artists, you know, things like that. It was the minutia of it all that I used, I used to just absorb it in when I was a younger fan. I still do. That's how, I mean, that's how we are as a band. You know, you walk into this house and we have a whole, you know, wall of vinyl here. And that's yeah. what we listen to, you know, on the regular, on, yeah, on the regular yeah. you know, we're pulling out the sleeves. We're looking at the, the lyrics and you know, the, the picture booklets, you know, everything that comes with the physical mm -hmm. album that you can physically like hold and, and look at. It's, it's it's really what makes what the band does very special to the fan. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and I, I, think, you know, I think that there's people out there and I think that it might just be a matter of time uh, and things changing, but it might come back around. We, I mean, we, we have pre-orders out there right now and there's fans from Japan that obviously we've never met. We've never been to Japan buying CDs, Argentina, the UK, you know, we haven't been over to Europe yet. So, um, you know, it, it's out there. It's in a smaller volume and frequency, but it's out there. And when there's a spark, a fire is behind it at I some point. Gonna say, yeah. So that that's great then. So your pre-sales for the new album have been good? Yeah, they've yeah. been good. We're, we're super excited and thankful and appreciative because like I said, you know, those fans and those people out there that are music lovers, actual music lovers um you're very important and we appreciate you yep. you know what i mean so scotty I, I have a quote here um that you said about this new album that <laughs> it was a drinking game about whose guitar had been tuned the most times who who won actually i guess who lost <laughs> <laughs> well since i have the most guitar parts he lost <laughs> like me i spend most of my days that month tuning I don't know if you, if you asked Nacho, he said that I was pretty on it. You know, Chad's, Chad's guitar, you know, stays in tune. It's pretty I don't good. know how true that is, but. Nacho developed uh, a love-hate relationship <laughs> for Gibson guitars. We, oh, uh, we, had a, we had a couple of old school Gibsons that, you know, had seen their day. And um, and tuning wasn't their uh, their favorite thing to do. So, well, Scotty, <laughs> Scotty, I have to agree with you, though, because Chad's singing. You're, you're the one wailing <laughs> more. So he, you know, if, if you lost, I'm sorry. He That's no excuse for him. He was, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> any surprises coming up that you guys can share? Um, oh, yeah, yeah awesome. absolutely. I, you know, besides for dates, um, right now there's not much posted, but behind the scenes we're, we're building a, a repertoire. So keep an eye out for that. There's going to be some cool new locations. Um, but uh, yeah, in terms of surprises, I think we, we've got something that we could kind of allude to in, in our uh, in endeavors of videoing. Um, we did a really cool um, private show at the Westcott theater in Syracuse yep. um, during COVID lockdown. And uh, we actually had people there. Um, and full we got through a full film crew. Um, so there's going to be some live videos from that. And I think that that goes back to the core of what we're about is yeah. being a live band. Um, so if you think back watching like bands like UFO, like on YouTube, when somebody filmed like a the really cool live test. show, yeah, like, yeah, like the old gray the whistle test, top of the pops, all those stuff like that, but actually live, um, we got some of that cool stuff coming out. So that's, that's kind of a little, we haven't talked about that at all yet and uh that's we're excited cool. to see that yeah that's very cool though during covid it's kind of funny because you guys are a band you live in one house you all you know bind together there's another band very much like that that i'm a big fan of but they're over in europe called stop stop i don't know if you know them oh, or yeah, not. yeah yeah we've yeah. heard of those guys yeah. they, they they are very much like yourselves but they're a trio they're not a foursome um and they did a thing on facebook when all this started happening because it was a lot worse over there their lockdowns were really tight you didn't leave the house without having some kind of paperwork you know yeah <clears throat> um they did a stream concert from their living room standing on milk crates and everything it was in insane <laughs> that's great yeah. and so much fun to watch it was literally a live concert of just them in a room like you guys are right now yeah, and here cool, in yeah. canada we have a band called the wild um, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Heard of them. yeah yeah they're actually really they did one but they rented a hall like in uh not a stadium, uh, like an arena. And they put on like with lights and a little bit of pyro all at once. No audience at all, except for an iPad in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. Just a way to stay in touch with the fans and keep their chops up, I guess, and let off a little steam. You know, you're in a house under lockdown all the time. 
have you guys considered doing a, a Facebook stream show, even uh, yeah, you know, one uh, for a, a new album, club. one or two songs live? We did one for a club in New York uh, called Arlene's during lockdown. But yeah, that's definitely something that we're working on for this album. But in, in honesty, we're excited to get out there again live. Um, but we're going to use some of the things where you got you had to get creative during lockdown, and we're going to still do those, like you said, live streams. Um, one of the other things we did at the beginning of lockdown was we did just some cool like living room like you know things where we would try to like learn like a a, a song by oh, yeah. Rod Stewart yeah, or Cheap Trick, Cheap Trick, and and you know Sweet we would Louis. do do a little bit of that, and then we did something called the Glamcast, which was a podcast we had at the beginning of COVID. And it was just us sitting in a room like this, you know, getting a little sloshy and, and just kind of talking shit or talking about whatever was new that month. Um, and, and that was cool. Just a good um, way to stay in touch with the fans. The fans us. were able to kind of be entertained by that, but also feel like they were with us. And, and I think that there's a way to still do all that stuff in just slightly different manners going forward. It just adds to the, you know, the content and the repertoire of, of being connected with your fans. So yeah. it's, it's, it's cool. So another thing I noticed, and this is a real pet peeve of mine, but I love that you guys did this. I talk to a lot of bands, usually over in Europe, you know, a few here in Canada. But one thing that drives me nuts is our style of our genre that we like, the hard rock, the, the yeah. you know, we're not, well, most of us are 16 anymore. We're not a size yeah. one or a size two. <laughs> we are usually a bigger crowd. I mean, I'm six foot nine. We are, I weigh almost 380 pounds. I'm a big dude. Oh my, you're six <laughs> now. <laughs> oh my, yeah, I'm sitting down. <laughs> you, yeah, you, want a a job, you want a job as security with Wicked? <laughs> yeah, big hands. You know, but I noticed <laughs> on your site, I was looking because I'm awesome. always looking to support the band. And the best way to do that isn't always through the music. It's through t-shirts and, and memorabilia that way. You guys are the first, and I have to thank you, the first I have found that actually has shirts up to 3X. <laughs> oh my God, I was so pleased. Now, I, I, I have to ask my wife for permission. I haven't ordered one yet, you know, but you know, you gotta, you gotta do that when you're a married man. You gotta get permission. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a whip the rock and roll fan. We, uh, it's actually pretty cool because we found a, a nice partner um, to make that a little bit more efficient, right? So back to the business side is, sometimes it's hard when you gotta pick a certain amount of sizes, and you have the upcharges for, you know, different setups when you get over a certain, you know, size of t-shirt. Um, and, and it's hard for bands, you know, to your point that are, are not financially at a point where it, things are fluid um, to buy that physical inventory, have that overhead and, um, and be able to be versatile in all things. But our, our, one of our cool partners, Manic Merch, that we have on our website, if you want to hit it, check it out. We're able to put all of our designs there and they'll make a one-off shirt and any size with no extra charge to us, it's slightly a little bit more expensive for us to do that, but it makes it, it makes it more efficient for the fans to kind of, even fans that aren't going to come to a show, say in Rochester or Harrisburg or Brooklyn, you know, to still get the merch and yeah. still support and also be able to feel connected. You know what I mean? So that's important. Yeah. And like I said, it was just, I was really impressed because you were literally the first that I have found that <laughs> even bigger bands. Like, you know, I said, I'm a Kiss fan. But I go onto yeah. their website or their web store. I can't order shirts for that fit me. I have to go yeah. to some outcast, non-licensed place, and they don't make a dime. I'm not supporting my favorite bands. Sure. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, so it's a it's a personal message for me to you. Thank you very much for doing that because that's that's a nice touch. I, I really, really was impressed by that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, we're we're you glad. <laughs> but uh, you know. <laughs> I think I've pretty much covered everything I have on the talk to you about, but I do have to say one more thank you. I got this from you guys. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> it, it, it took me almost two years, uh, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a bit busy and I'll accept that. <laughs> you know, um, anything else you guys want to say at all? Like, do you want to talk about anything else? Yeah, I think, you know, it's just important to plug the fact that, you know, again, um, our website, wickedrockandrollofficial.com. If you go there, it'll take you anywhere to any of our social media, which is, is yeah. all tagged at Wicked Rock and Roll. Um, but yeah, we've got pre-orders, pre-saves. We got the new music out, Last American Rock Band. Super excited about it. Um, you know, follow us uh, in, in the journey on that album release because it's pretty cool. 
and uh and then you know don't hold your breath because you know we've got another album coming out um most likely this year uh we'll give you the the title it's called um living like a sunburn and uh it's california super cool. <laughs> and uh it's super cool from a standpoint that you're going to get to see a bit of the evolution of the band um and uh you know we're keeping it old school wicked rock and roll but the writing keeps going keeps evolving and you know like we said the quality and content creation whether it be from the production of the songs or to the actual audio visual is we've taken it up a level and we got to thank our partners um you know that are helping us with that and uh we're super excited because it's just the beginning and, and we're working on a surprise um that we're not gonna we're not gonna dive too much into but i'll, I'll just give you a little hint that um it's gonna bring the fans even closer into what it's like to be living on a daily basis with the band so look out for that that's, that's gonna very be cool that's gonna be so, fun. <laughs> with, with the digital medium uh concept on spotify now, any chance of you guys putting some of those old albums uh like life alive and and uh all covered up on digital medium to re-push them back out to people i'm glad you said that um i think those versions that existed in their limited form um no um because we were excited that there's people out there that have them and and then there's some that you know will have to look to you know etsy or ebay or, or whatever to to see those pop up we in the future them, yeah. but we do have a, a, a an old catalog of of 100 songs and these are songs that we played live and they're very much the brothers and sisters of those songs and maybe some of those will trickle into it too um and we we do plan on doing something cool as we're moving forward here and and doing a little bit of a, a recording of those that never even saw the light of day because yeah. they're awesome they're really cool songs and and they're our history right they go back to um you know the the early days of when we were starting to play live and who the band was so we will do that so look forward to that um but you know we're super excited to to be able to be together be a band a real rock band and um and playing real music for people so um i think that's important at the end of the day and, and it is great I, I just got an individual question for each one of you is, who are you digging these days mm. who are you playing personally who are you guys digging this this is like what do you want to eat at, at the counter of the <laughs> restaurant so the, everybody's well, i could ask you what your favorite gig was but you know any live gig could follow that <laughs> <laughs> Most recently, um, I mean, we've been really getting into whenever Ghost puts out something new, that's been killer because that's yeah, Tobias is awesome when, when it comes to yeah, know. we've been we've been pushing his new single on our station quite a bit. That's that's a pretty yeah. cool song, yeah. It's a mix. Our, producer, our producer was going nuts with the, the new song that just came out 20s because it's got the reggaeton beat, right? Mm -hmm. But with a, with a hard rock thing, yeah. and he's like, Those sons of bitches, I've been trying to do this for years. <laughs> Um, I know I'm, I'm digging, uh, I'm digging a band called wildlife. They're from, uh, New York. Um, the Brooklyn boys. Yeah. Yeah. They got like a really cool rock punk, uh, edge to them. Um, but they're just really cool guys. And, and we found them just recently as of like maybe a couple of years ago. And, yeah. And they're just one of those bands that like, it's always on my playlist. Bit of an uh, Hanoi rocks mixed with, you know, some other things like you wouldn't even know, know it if you looked at them, but yeah. Um, you know yeah it's cool it's rock and roll right like good songwriters yeah they, they're they're very cool yeah another independent band yeah um what about you Gunnar? oh god i i i personally have been uh i love the biters they're they're from what atlanta yep um and then they're, they're not even around together they're, they're anymore, not, but. No, um, the singer has its own has his own uh, entity right now with this yeah, i was gonna say they're now. defunct i believe yeah yeah, yeah, the Whiters are will always be one of my favorite bands. But Tuck Tuck Smith and the Restless Hearts that that's some that's some good music. It's a little yeah. bit more you know um, towards the you know Tom Petty um, you know oh. cheap trick vibes. But you know I I you know Tuck Tuck being from the Whiters and just everything that he does. He worked with Wildlife. You know he's he's one of the people that are the cruxes of the rock and roll scene in the U.S. Um, and he'll help, you know, push new bands in as well as, you know, putting out his own material. I think that's important, you know? It's important to have people like that that are supporting the scene. Um, so that's super cool. For me, um, you know, it, it, 
it, it's funny when you ask a question like that, I'd like to touch on the fact that there are a lot of good bands out there. It's about finding them. Um, and you always feel like there's not enough. Right. Um, but for me, one of the cool bands that isn't, isn't so much a new band, but is still very active and relevant and just put out some new music. I think it's coming out April 1st, the new album, eyes of oblivion, but the helicopters, um, oh, yes. so the helicopters are like, Oh my God. I, it's, it's a bucket list band. I have not seen them live yet, which kills me. Um, but I've loved them for ever since I can remember finding them through liking the backyard babies because dragons and the helicopters. Right. And, um, you know, everything that Mickey Anderson does in the helicopters or an Imperial state electric, um, or in Lucifer, um, just really good, uh, musicians, very, very at the core rock stars. Um, and, and they, they just, blend all that stuff that we love whether it be Stones. the beatles whether it be the 70s rock and roll a little bit of those kiss influences with all that garage rock punk and that you know when you think about the four of us and you know how we come together and make our own sound as wicked it's the same thing so we have we have a huge appreciation for that gunner's a metalhead chad very much a, a, a pop you know rock guy you know loves like bands like third eye blind when in the same sense he likes hard rock music yeah. you know i i grew up on a lot of punk rock you know the dead boys rancid stuff like that and scotty's a big aerosmith guy so you know just imagine all that blending together and it's like it it and you're not ripping somebody off that's important when you talk about new music and artists and and music making it's more about you know, the way influenced. to do it is be influenced. Yep. Don't try to go and write a Motley Crue song and, and, you know, dye your beard and look like Nikki Six. Be yourself. But take it all and let it influence you and blend it. I, I, I can find it funny how you said metalhead, pop, hard rock, and just, just Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> Aerosmith sucks, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to say Aerosmith sucks. No. <laughs> no. I don't believe that, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I knew you're an Aerosmith fan. I could see your shirt. I mean, the Toxic Twins. That, you know, everybody knows exactly who that is. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, you two guys are self-promoting, and he's playing drums on the couch. And I can see him. You see me over here. Constantly practicing. That's that's great. <laughs> no, guys, I, I really appreciate the sit down. It's been a lot of fun, and you know what. In the future, if you guys have anything to promote, CGCM is here to help with that. That's what we do. I mean, yes, we play all those other big bands. Our main goal, though, is to get some of the newer bands to push what they need. We have a huge following over in Europe. That's so, awesome. you know, we hopefully we can uh, get you some sales over there and help push you a little bit. And when you get to Canada, give us a call. Maybe we can uh, get you connected with the guys at the Rock Pile and we can set something up. Absolutely. Let's do it, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. really appreciate it, man. So there you go, guys. That was my interview with uh, the band Wicked from New York. I really hope you enjoyed that. And I really hope you check out the band because they're, they're worth looking into. If you're anything like me, I like a band that looks like a band, theatrical rock. Trust me, these guys got the look. And they got a good sound. You know, they're new. They're upstarts. They need our support. So I'm going to put some stuff in the description down below. And I want you to go check them out. Tell them CGCM sent you. And uh, we'll see you at uh, the future holds. If they come to Toronto or Canada, watch right here in CGCM Rock Radio because we will let you know. So until next time, guys, this is Trevor Psycho Wood McDiggle saying keep on rocking and see you next time.